All right, folks. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a table of values to try and get an understanding of what of the basics of Keynes's theory, okay? And so what I want to introduce you to here is this table of values uh, which has uh, income in the first column, then consumption, investment, government spending, net exports, and then over here is total expenditures. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill this out and we're going to reveal a couple things. We're going to reveal some things that you have already learned in the past but may have forgotten. So one of the jobs of this table is to help remind you of some of the things that you have learned. Then we're going to look at the table and try and understand um, what Keynes was saying when he presented his theory or the basics of what he was saying. First, the very first thing we're probably going to need over here is we're going to need to identify the marginal propensity to consume. So if we can just zoom in up here to income and consumption, to what you just did in the last segment where you used income and consumption to identify the marginal propensity to consume, why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure out the marginal propensity to consume. All right, so remember, to find the marginal propensity to consume, we're going to need to do the change in consumption over the change in income, okay? All right, so look at this. Our change in consumption here, to find the change in consumption, we've got to take 7475 and subtract away 7400. And if you use the calculator, that's fine. I have one right here too, but I know that 7475 minus 7400, that's 75. So here we're going to have 75 divided by our change in income here goes from 12,000 to 12,100. So that is a change in income of 100, and 75 divided by 100 is 0.75. So I know that our marginal propensity to consume for this particular table is going to be 0.75. Okay? Now, it's important to understand that all of these numbers are in dollars. Okay, so this income is $12,000. Consumption is $7,400. But it's even more important to consider that on the level of an economy, these numbers are actually much bigger than just 12,000. Like, for example, this is likely to be 12,000 billion, which would basically be 12 trillion. $7,400 billion would be $7.4 trillion. This would be $3 trillion, $2.7 trillion. Now, I want you to notice net exports over here. Do you see how net exports is negative? One of the reasons that net exports is negative is, especially in the United States, we import more than we export. And since net exports is X minus M... If our imports are in value are larger than our exports in value, then we're going to have a smaller number minus a larger number, and that's going to result in a negative number, and that's why our net exports is negative 1,000, okay? All right, so that's what we have here uh, in, in our table. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to go over and I want to fill in the consumption line. Now, we just did that, too, in the last segment. Once we knew a marginal propensity to consume, we could then fill in a line, the next line for consumption, as long as we knew the change in income. Now, I do want to point out here that income on every one of these lines is increasing by 100. I forgot to, to, to tell you that when you set this up in your notes, you want to make sure that you have room for one, two, three four, five, six columns, and then the headings, and then there are 12 rows here. So make sure you have plenty of space in your notebook. You might even want to turn it sideways if you have to, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in all of these columns. What I'd like to do right now is I'd like for you to fill in the consumption column. Identify this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, using the marginal propensity to consume and knowing that on every line, income increases by 100. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and do that now. All right, so now I'm going to do it. I know that because income keeps going up by 100, 
since income is changing by 100 at a time, and I know that I'm going to multiply the change in income times the marginal propensity to consume, which is 0.75, that that equals 75. So I know that this consumption line, every single line is just going to go up by 75. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this number, then I'm going to add 75, which is 7,550. Then I'm going to add 75 again, which is going to be 7,625, and so on all the way down. All right, and there we have uh, our consumption line, and hopefully that wasn't too difficult for you to do mathematically and uh, practically. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the, this next column here, investment. So when income in the economy is 12,000, consumption will be 7,400, and investment will be 3,000. What we need to do is we need to figure out what investment will be when income goes up by 100. When an income goes up by 100, what will that do to investment? Now, before you answer that question, I want you to look back in your notes to the assumptions that we gave two segments ago, two video segments ago. There were five assumptions, and I want you to look at assumption number five. So if you look back at that, you'll see something very important. Now, if you look back at that, do you remember seeing, are you looking at your notes? Does it say something like, uh, according to Keynesian economic theory, one assumption is that investment is not directly affected by changes in income. And if that's true, then when income changes, investment won't be affected at all. This is our independent variable over here. And so as that changes, if investment is not affected by changes in the independent variable, then investment will not change at all. Therefore, the number that's going to go here is 3,000. Next one, 3,000. Next one, 3,000. We're going to be 3,000 all the way down because investment is not affected by changes in income. So we're going to go ahead and fill in 3,000 all the way down. Now, if you look closely enough at assumption number five from the first segment of Keynesian economic theory, you probably also noticed that government spending and net exports are also not affected by changes in income. Therefore, government spending is going to be 2700 all the way down. Net exports is going to be negative 1000 all the way down. So let's go ahead and fill that in. All right. So now we're almost done. All we have left is one column, total expenditure. Now, what are we going to put in for total expenditure? Well, I want to remind you of what all these components are, right? Consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. Do you remember our formula for total expenditure? Remember that total expenditure is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports? And therefore, total expenditure, very simply, is just going to be consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. So I'm going to grab a calculator here, and we're going to key in 7,400 plus 3,000 plus 2,700, and then plus negative 1,000, which is basically minus 1,000. And we're going to get 12,100 for total expenditure. Okay, now we have to do the same thing for every single row. And I know what you're thinking, man, that is a lot of adding. Well, let me remind you of something, okay? Every single one of the lines has these same numbers being added up, okay? So that's what? That's 3,000 plus 2,700 minus 1,000 right? That's 4,700. So all you really have to do is add 4,700 to all these numbers. 
But to uh, show you a, sort of an easier shortcut, remember that if we're just adding 4,700 to consumption, we already know that consumption, all that's doing is going up by 75 at a time. So if this is going up by 75 at a time, then we're going to add 4,700 to a number that's just going up by 75 at a time. Therefore, this total expenditure over here, it's just going to go up by 75 at a time. So let's go ahead and fill out total expenditure, and we'll add 75 to the previous number as we go up. Okay, so this is where everything's going to get really cool. Maybe you've already figured it out, maybe you haven't. But when you look at this table, there's something interesting happening. And before I show you that interesting thing, I need to explain something to you about this table. So what each one of these lines are, you might be thinking of them as, oh, in like January, we're at 12,000. And then in February, we're at 12,100. And then in March, we're at 12,200. That's not how this is working at all. This is a static table, meaning that every single one of these is happening at the same time. What you're looking at here actually is a list of possibilities, and only one of these possibilities can happen. For example, have you ever made a list of like pros and cons for like three choices? Maybe when you were getting ready to go to college, you were you had uh, or applying to college or being accepted to college. Maybe you had like three choices, and what you did was you 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 lined them up next to each other, and you said, "Well, these are all the good and the bad things about going to this college." These are all the good and the bad things about going to this college. And then these are all the good and bad things about going to this college. And by putting them next to each other, you were able to line them up and compare them to each other easily. That's what's happening here. Every single one of these lines is a different possibility for the economy. Our economy could have 12 trillion in income, or it could have 12, 12 trillion. 0.1 trillion or 12.2 trillion or 12.3 trillion. In one year, for example, in the year 2014, the economy can't simultaneously have 12.2 trillion in income and 12.6 trillion in income. We are going to measure our income for that year and it's only going to be one number. And so the way that you have to think about this table is you have to think about it as possibilities. Each line is a different dimension in a multi-universe, and only one of them is going to happen. The dimension, the one that happens is the one that we're in, right? So if income winds up being 12.7 trillion, this line alone is our universe. Okay, hopefully you can understand that. If you had a hard time with it, you may want to uh, watch that segment, that part of the, this video again. But now I need to, to bring, bring you to a new place. In addition to all 12 of these possibilities being unique and mutually exclusive, meaning only one of them can happen, here's the other thing I have to say, is that 11 of these possibilities aren't actually possibilities. 11 of these can't happen. Only one of them can happen. One of them has what we call equilibrium. The other 11 do not have equilibrium. Only one of them has what we call equilibrium real GDP. And let me explain what I mean by that, or let me explain how you would figure out which one has equilibrium real GDP. In fact, if you look at it, you might be able to pause the video and figure this one out for yourself. But here's where I'm going to lead you. I want to go back several lessons. And I want you to remember the fact that we learned, back when we learned about GDP, gross domestic product, one of the things that I taught you was that there were several ways 
of calculating GDP, right? We want to learn about economic growth. That's the abstract concept. The indicator for economic growth is real GDP. But what I taught you was that there were several ways to calculate real GDP. One way to calculate real GDP is through income, national income. How much income did all the people in the economy earn? The other way was through expenditure. How much money did all the people and businesses in the economy spend? And what we said is that income should be equal to expenditure because both of them are ways of calculating GDP, right? We had the little example with the, uh, with the lumberjack that chops down the tree, the miller that mills the lumber into, excuse me, mills the timber into lumber, then the carpenter buys the lumber, builds a chair, then the store owner buys the chair, and then the customer buys the chair from the store owner, okay? So, do you remember in that example, we said that there was the income that each of those people earned, and there was how much money the, the person at the end, the, the customer, they spent a certain amount to buy the chair. And that the amount of money that they spent to buy the chair, that's the expenditure, is equal to all of the income earned by all of those people that produced that chair or, or contributed to the production of that chair. So here's what I want to come to, is that income has to be equal to expenditure. And the problem is, in this first line, income is 12,000 or 12 trillion, and expenditure is 12.1 trillion or 12,100. That number and that number are not in equilibrium. They have to be in equilibrium in order for this line to be a possibility in the universe. And so now what I want you to do is I want you to look at your table and I want you to find the one line out of all 12 where income and total expenditure are equal to each other. On that line, that line is in equilibrium and that is the one that will be the real one for our universe, for our economy. Okay, so when we're looking at it, we're looking at the left, looking at the right, looking for one line, I found it. Do you see it? It's 12,400. See here? So we go across here, 12,400, all the way to the other side. Total expenditure is also 12,400. And here's what we will now say is, based on that line, I'm going to put this here, I'm going to put an arrow here, and an arrow here. And what this means is that equilibrium, real GDP, is 12,400 for this circumstance in the economy, okay? And that is the first thing that I need you to understand, what we're going to do is in the next segment is we're going to see what happens if there's a change in the table. That when there's a change in the table, there's going to be a change in equilibrium real GDP.